Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be making an imaginative painting in pan pastel and also in pastel pencils. Here's the first layer after the pan pastel. It's a pretty rough pass, but you get the idea. I'll come back over it in pencil and that allows me to put down more detail right where I want it. And it's pretty important to have the tissue paper out at this point to protect the rest of the pastel from your hand smudging everything. I still have the pan pastel out at this point because I am using them a little bit here and there. And I'm also using one of the soft tools in order to soften a few of the lines if the lines from the pencil are a bit too harsh. But I was really surprised at how much I was able to get into place in this painting just using the pan pastel and the soft tools. I'm using the pencils pastel pencils, these are the Carbothello pencils, and they are allowing me to just slowly and steadily build up the detail I want in the subject here, which is a mining bee. And one of the strengths I'm finding with pastel is I can glaze, similar to I how I would in an oil painting, but I don't have to wait for it to dry. I it, There are other paints like acrylic that dry quickly, but that's also one of the challenges. So I don't have to worry about my pigment drying. It's already a dry medium. So it's really giving me a lot of flexibility, which I'm appreciating. And with the soft tools, I don't get hung up on using it like I would a pencil and then having images that are really, really tight, but I can go from loose back to tight detail work really easily. So. I'm definitely enjoying this and I'm definitely uh, appreciating it as I work on bringing this mining bee to life. I have my middle and dark values in place and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna start building up towards my highlights. So I will kind of work in some mid to upper value yellows and oranges, and then I might even get to white, but I'm gonna hold off on that until I see how I feel about uh, the middle and upper value yellows. But again, I'm just kind of keeping my pencils sharp if I have an area that I want to emphasize that kind of furry fuzziness. Um, or sometimes the pencils are kind of dull if I'm not too worried about it, if it's an area that I'm going to smudge in or, or blend out so it's not, you know, standing kind of front and center and attracting the viewer's eye as much. I pulled out my reference sketch. This was the little imaginative sketch that I put together that I knew I would need to work from so that I could get this subject realistic looking. So I lost the drawing for the lantern a bit. I'm bringing that back and then I'm bringing in that light source. I was really interested in having this bee flying home at dusk um, and I wanted that lantern to be basically the light source other than the twilight that's falling behind towards the horizon. I'm working in a little bit of soft pastel. Um, I found that the pencils were starting to scratch into the sanded paper a bit more and lift off some pigment. And I want this pigment to sit on top, kind of like you would for an oil painting. Your lightest paint is always that last layer that you put on. Same idea here. Um, and that should help me get this lantern to stand out and the light source to stand out. Same idea here on the mining bee. I'm just coming around with that nice, super light yellow value soft pastel. 
and I'm putting down some of my brightest brights. I'm being careful that they're on the underside of the bee um, because that's where the light source is. I want to emphasize the fuzz on the top, but I don't want that to be lighter in value than what's on the underside, just to support that main light source being from her lantern. Now it's time to switch gears and take another look at the flower. I have a purple cone flower that's part of this painting. And as I'm wrapping up the details on the bee, I wanna make sure I emphasize these antenna because I think they're pretty cool looking. Once I have that in place though, I'm gonna pop over with the soft tool and then get a little bit more color, a few more layers of color down on this cone flower. Again, I want this to be fairly subdued. It shouldn't jump out more than the bee, but I definitely need to map it out a little bit better so that it makes sense in the painting. I need to bring a little bit of that twilight background color in around the pickaxe. I would love to do that with the soft tool, but at this point, I don't know that I can really mix the right uh, color that I need. So I'm just going in with pencil and kind of cross hatching this down. I'll blend it to soften it up and then hopefully that will get close enough to that main background color. Um, in future paintings, I may do a transfer of my drawing so that I can do a more uniform background and not have it come in around the subject. But I'll keep it in mind. This worked, this seemed to work out pretty well. Not, it was pretty close. Maybe not a perfect match, but not too bad. One other reason to do it this way was I have that glow from the lantern and that's gonna fade out into the darker background. I didn't know right where that was gonna be, so I kinda had to wait until the subject was in place to do these little final background details. Other than a couple teeny tiny finishing details, I'm calling this one a wrap. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.